That's the only goal you see in this presentation. And then you will not see inside any of these kermas very much because I didn't dig any of them. So, um, in southeastern Kazakhstan, along the northern edge of the Tianshan Mountains, the national symbol of the Republic of Kazakhstan is golden water. And that's what you saw in the last slide. And he was discovered in 1969 in the side burial of a large Tsar Kurgan. And this iconic burial was of a 17-year-old youth clothed in a caftan and leggings of small gold plaques, uh, belt buckles, and a headdress, including two facing horses, twisted felines, and jagged mountain peaks. And this burial is part of a larger reserve of 70 preserved kurgans in the Isik alluvial fan, 15 kilometers from the Talbot region. Um, little is known about the relationship between the splendid princely burial and the Iron Age settlements of Talgar. And so I just show you a map, and, and this is the area where I work, and, it, and these are the Chenchan Mountains, so you can imagine this is the whole Ili River Valley, and so we call this area semi Retchi, and, and uh, we're working on an alluvial fan. So we have been doing this work since um, the mid-90s, and we have uh, quite a few, um, uh, we've done mostly survey and only uh, excavations at three settlements. So what I'm going to do in this paper is I'm going to compare four burial mound um, clusters on the Talgar fan, and remember there are about thousands of burials here, uh, um, Kurgans, and then I'm going to look at the Isik Kurgan, which is just to the east of Talgar, and I'm also going to show you some uh, results of our survey, our pedestrian survey, and our magnetometer survey. Um, and so, uh, just to give you, uh, I think you need to see some, uh, what this Talgar fan looks like. The peak Talgar is about um, uh, 5,000 meters in elevation, and those black marks are our um, Kurgan, some we found through archival data, some through walking surveys. And if you notice very carefully, they seem to be found along the uh, stream bed of this uh, alluvial fan um, constru uh, uh, geological construction. And so uh, our the main site that we excavated is a settlement site called Tisasai. I just have to show off a student of mine who's actually working on it. And we've been excavating it uh, over a period of 12 years. And what's interesting about the site is it dates from 400 BC to AD 1, which is um, sort of in the transitional period between these archaeological cultures called Saka and Swani. And uh, there are site um, remains of wheat, barley, and foxtail and green corn millet. So these are not pure nomads. And, um, uh, the animal bone specialists have found sheep, goats, cattle, horses, um, and, and a little bit of camel. And so the size of Chuzu's eye, according to us, um, is about 8 to 10 hectares. And that just shows you a Google Earth image, and you can see, you can see all of these waypoints. Some of them are curvas, a lot of them demarcate demarcate the, um, uh, uh, the site with little shirt scatters. Uh, we did all of this very painstaking uh, uh, field walking to find these kinds of things. Um, and uh, I'll show you the next slide. Uh, the, this, we had uh, your Fassbinder and Lena Kuhn who did magnetometer survey at Tucson in 2012. And we're trying to put together this very interesting history of how the Kurgans fit together with the settlements of the Iron Age, because you don't really understand it. And I just have to show some of his um, results. This first block, I think, was a uh, two hectare block. And you see these orange uh, areas. He calls them Rubenhauser or pit houses, but they seem very large to me. Notice what a tiny little excavation we have, and that's almost 12 years of excavation. And then those kind of dark lines are the uh, old stream channels. 
And you, so you get an idea, and then we found all the survey material of sherds, and then associated with this particular site are 12 kurgons, most of which have been destroyed. This is very rich, low soil, so you have to ask yourself, why is it this way that you have burial mounds right near the settlements? And the settlement is quite huge and sprawling. So um, here is a western, uh, the north block, this is a little bit bigger, it's four hectares. And, and uh, what's interesting um, is that's a lightning strike, sorry about that. But these are um, fire pits, and the yellow orange line is possibly ditch or canals. And so we're very excited about that because we're thinking maybe these Iron Age so called nomads were doing some irrigation and agriculture, which you would need to do with this wheat cultivation. And um, then on this side, of this slide, you see these are uh, small little graves. Which we, uh, I have not actually excavated them, so I can't tell you, but I would love to believe this is the Commodore Cemetery, and then you have some kurgans associated with the settlement itself, and that would be quite interesting. Um, but I can't tell you that that's true, because it's just my fantasy. <laughs> um, and here again, so you get an idea of what it's like. These are all agricultural fields, and the one place where we excavate is we're permitted to excavate there because it's between irrigation blocks. And so we're working in these big agricultural areas, and, 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 and there's a Kurgan near here, a burial mound, and then you see the, 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 the big, huge magnetometer survey and the little tiny excavations we've got where we find pit houses and mud brick architecture. So it's quite uh, quite interesting, actually. And uh, I gave you some tables, and these are five Kurgan dimensions that were found southeast of Tuzasai, and some of them are found from archives. You notice that Akishev excavated um, uh, one of these in 1986, and they're mostly robbed in antiquity, so there isn't very much. And the local typology goes this way, the stone Kurgans, are usually Usani and Usan, and the ones, the uh, earthen ones, sometimes they believe to be the Saka or the Eastern variants of the Scythians. So, um, and to get an idea, I'm doing sort of everything that Jim told us not to do. I'm looking at size of the Kurgans and height and giving you an idea. And by and large, if you look at these, most of these are fairly small to medium size. They are not big, huge ones. Um, maybe there's one huge one, it's three meters in, in height. And then I want to talk about this other area, Taldi Bulak, which is a little bit more to the um, south. And this is also another settlement site that we've done for about seven years. And you see it right here in this yellow line. And then you see a whole line of kurgans that go, go up there. And I started to say, so what are these kurgans? We're pretty sure they're contemporaneous. So we're thinking, are they borders? Why do they tend to be along um, the banks of old stream beds? It's a pretty interesting question. Um, so, let's see, did I? Um, and, and so you see the Iron Age kurgans and the settlements, the yellow ones of the settlements. And then, of course, I, you know, I look at some, uh, just a, a small sample of one of these linear, linear kinds of um, clusters. And you get, once again, what's interesting about this one is that they're a little bit bigger in diameter and in height than they were in that big, large two society area. So you begin to think about that as well. Well, there is a model, um, the very model that perhaps Jim would not approve of. Um, and it comes from Bishatir, and in um, the 1963, uh, Akishev and Kushaya have actually worked on these Bishatir uh, Saar Kurgans, which are uh, north in the Ili Valley. They're very huge. These are the two, probably the two largest ones. I just stole this image from the, from the uh, um, you know, internet because I've never been there. And this is what he did. He gave diameter ranges and height ranges, and then he it described what he thought the social groupings were. So he said enlisted warriors, aristocratic elites, and these saw curve Of course, they have to have clan leaders in them. 
Um, well, you know, it's hard for a settlement archaeologist to write about mortuary material, so I thought, well, I don't know if I completely agree with the social groupings, but I'll go along with it. You know, so this is the where Golden Warrior was found in a beautiful sunset picture. And you know, when I stand on those curve outs, I think, this is the Valley of the Kings. I can't help it, I'm sorry. But you know, it's the Valley of the, of the, of the Wusan or Saka Kings. We don't know that. But um, I just wanted to give you an idea of just how gorgeous this landscape is on an alluvial fan that's right next to us. But they can't find the settlements. We can find settlements near our curve outs but we don't have such splendid curve outs. Now, um, my friend, Beckin Atta Morandetta, who just died, unfortunately, this year, um, he was able to spend his entire life, he was the founder of Golden Warrior, to actually get the state of Kazakhstan, the country of Kazakhstan, to give him a Kurgan reserve for the people of Kazakhstan. And there are 71 Kurgans mostly preserved in this area. And then there's a very nice museum that goes with it. And then you see, you know, there's all this agricultural development and, and dachas and their kurgans in and amongst those dachas. Now, when you look at the Isik kurgans, and this is only 37 of them, mm -hmm. of the 71 that I could find, and I don't have the dimensions, the, the uh, diameters, but you can just see the heights. You know, two meters, 12 of them. So there's some smaller ones. There's, there's some really, really very big ones and tall ones. And so you get an idea of what that burial landscape is like. So um, I thought then, so this paper sort of goes in a weird order, is I would go back to the Talbar fan and I would talk about an area that is north of um, north and east of our particular study area. This is called Malodovi Alexeyevka, and it was dug by uh, local archaeologists in 1956. And uh, we don't have the Kurgan locations exactly, so I had to try to read this map. And I would think this is his original unpublished drawings of where these Kurgans were um, because of all sorts of infrastructure development. They no longer, uh, many of them don't exist anymore, at least on this 1960s map. They were probably in here somewhere, is my guess, just by looking at the rivers. And uh, this is an amazing place because the Kurgans here, unlike the ones that I'm looking at in my area, um, it, um, around Chusai and, um, and Talbi Bulat, these are really, some of these are huge. And they make kind of a nice linear line, and you can see the elevations that you know where they're set. It's a little bit further down on this down sloping alluvial fans. It's quite interesting, and um, so um, I, I these are clearly medium sized to very large kurgans. So what's going on here in terms of social organization? Now um, let's see, and I just give you an idea. So these are some of the 1955 finds from Kopila's uh, original field notes. And uh, most would fall into the Bishop tier medium-sized Kurgans. At least two would fall into the Sar Kurgan range. Um, and they are really near the riverbank. And so we wonder, are these sort of socio-political claims to this very valuable uh, river land. Now you have to remember that these people are doing, we're probably doing irrigation agriculture because it's pretty hard to grow wheat, which we have paleobotanical evidence for, in the middle of the summer in um, Kazakhstan, it's rather dry. And so, um, you know, here's some illustrations. So there are some things inside. This, unfortunately, A and B no longer exist. They're kind of what we call pyramidal shaped kurgans. They're, they're, they make a rectangle and, and they're kind of flat on the top and it's rounded, but it isn't really. And you see some of the axes found there and very simple, nice pottery found inside, but nothing I would call particularly splendid in terms of the burial. Um, materials, but that's not to say that there weren't. We just don't seem to find them. So I guess my question is, I have two questions. I want to know how the elite fit in with these simple, what I would call agro-pastoralists 
I study, um, how they fit in with the people who are also living in the same area who are building this massive kurgan. And the time period is the same. So that's always been my major theme and question. So, like, um, I run to the ethnographic record, maybe the wrong ethnographic record, but I try it anyway. And I borrowed this idea from Christopher Atwood, who studies um, Mongolian social order. And he's a historian, and he uses this wonderful word, apanage, and he uses it to describe the Mongol system of nomadic organization. And he says an apanage is an area or a community of people assigned to a nobleman or an aristocrat. And the apanage provides the nobleman. Because I asked him about this. I said, do they get usufruct rights, the, the commoners to this land, to the nobleman, or what do they get? And he said, no, it's much more complicated. The first thing they get is they get legal political rights. I mean, the, the, the uh, head of the Akhmash has legal political rights over the community as a whole. And I'm not talking about land, I'm talking about whatever community he or she, you know, is, is in charge of. And then, according to, um, According to Atwood, they also get proprietary rights over people, such as tax or tribute collecting. They can tell people to shift from one territory to the other. So this is my attempt to take a bunch of Google Earth imagery and spatial analysis and try to relate it to social uh, political organization. And so I'm asking, and, and I'm giving you a very, very tiny sample of the total data, were the linear clusters of um, at um, Tuzusai and Talvi Bullock examples of Akhenaj like organization, and if that cemetery next to Tuzusai is actually um, a seminar, cemetery of commoners as opposed to this um, to these kurgans, then you have elite formation and commoner formation, and you know, you have this structure with the elites and the commoners fitting together. And then at a place like Isik and um, uh, Novi Alekseevka, these much, much bigger kurgans, and uh, if this is about social stratification, what's going on there? Are they in the centers of bands where they control major, um, major, the whole area of the fan itself, and how do they tie in to larger regional perspectives? So uh, uh, I want to uh, thank all my collaborators and, and friends who have helped me over the years. Thank you.